my name is Mark Watson. Uh, I'd like to share with you all uh, a little bit of my story. I've always been a believer in God, but really never had anything to like grasp onto. I was off on my own path and a young, as a young man starting off in my 20s. Because all I cared about was, you know, how high I can get up the corporate ladder and how much money I can make. And it was about status and... You know, that's not really what life's about. It's really not what's important. It's Mark's will be done, not your will. And when it was Mark's will be done, <laughs> all bets are off. When I'm left to my own devices, and I don't have the Holy Spirit within me, and I don't have God with me, and I'm not being a godly man, it's chaos. I just got from the couch one November day, and experienced some severe leg pain uh, emanating from behind my knee my leg was a mess uh, it was not only blood clots I had a condition called deep vein thrombosis so the infection set in and that was the beginning of the end uh, of my left leg now in that dark period when I was questioning God I was really angry I was trying to search for answers as to, you know, why this was going to happen to me and, and how I was going to overcome this. You know, it is written that God is my strength and my refuge and my present help in times of trouble. Lord, I'm in trouble. God, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. They're going to take my leg away from me. I'm never going to be the same again. Those enemies' thoughts started creeping into my head. I'm not going to be the same again. You're going to be different. You're never going to walk again like you used to. You're never going to be able to throw football with your son again. You're never going to be able to wrestle with your son. You're never going to be able to walk hand in hand with your girlfriend through the park. You're, you're screwed. You're different. You're not going to be the same. You're going to be crippled. You're going to be disabled. So after I learned that I was going to be amputated and that uh, basically my leg was, was messed up, I was in prayer and just saying to God and Jesus, are you here? I need you more, more now than ever before. As I said earlier, I need your strength, your love, your power, your, your courage, your hope. Everything that he is, I was been about to need. And um, so I'm sitting, I'm in intensive care unit of Shadyside, East Pittsburgh. Uh, I was learning of my amputation. And I'm looking up at the curtain. And in the left-hand corner, the S-hooks were shaped and laid out just over throughout the curtain because it was scrunched up to the side. And I look up and there's light shining through it behind the S-hooks and the curtain, bright light shining from the other rooms. And I'm sitting there looking up there and I'm like, are you kidding me? It says Jesus. The light is positioned just so perfectly behind those S-hooks and they're laid out just so right and the curtain's in a specific place. It says Jesus. And I'm like, wow, he's here. I got this. We got this. I'm going to be okay. We're going to make it. God, Jesus, doesn't give up on me, hasn't given up on me. He did not forsake me. He's my strength and my refuge. Jesus was here. Jesus was with, was with me. And I knew right then and there, as I said, that we got this. And that he will guide me and direct me through this and he did and so when those thoughts were of when the enemy set in was telling me I may not walk again or or you know might not be able to throw football with my son again or walk with my girlfriend in the park you know it got right to I'm going to walk again so but then got the one prosthetic and, and started to walk and um started getting used to the feel and started to move and become mobile and you know two months later I was throwing football with my son in a park and we were wrestling 
and I am walking. I'm learning a new way to walk and uh, a different way to walk, but that's okay. You know, God is still with me. He's not done with me, and I can do all things through Christ. He strengthens me. And I want you to help me welcome tonight, Mark Watson. What a video, right? Yes, yes, What a video. Give all the glory to God. It is my privilege to be up here on the stage with Mark Watson, a man who has given just so much to God in the course of what's happened with him um, over the past, since November, uh, since November yes, of, of last year, right, Mark? Yes, ma'am. So we just wanted to take a few minutes for you to get to see Mark, not just on the video, but see Mark in person, and just to hear a few thoughts from him. And um, we wanted to start out just by, um, at, what I guess we're all curious about is the scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How is that scripture been something that, has, that you've leaned on through this period of time? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, well, I've been facing, what I was facing these last, uh, well, it's been eight months now, okay? And uh, that scripture is so vital and, and to me because when you're in the depths of darkness and pain and suffering and you know life throws a curveball at you sometimes you know in the blink of an eye it can change and, but uh, I know that I needed something supernatural really to um, to get me through this and I know Jesus has all the power all the strength all the love and the wisdom but it was a scary time you know um, but I got right into prayer immediately, and, um, and I couldn't be here today. I give all the glory to God. I wouldn't be here today, right now, sitting here in front talking to you all uh, if it wasn't for God and His His love and his instilled in me courage. It's another thing, you know. Faced with losing my leg, I'm like, you know, that's kind of hard to accept. And um, there came a point in all of that that I had to let go and let God be the pilot. And Jesus instilled in me his strength. Let go and let God. I remember we had seen each other in Walmart. This was prior to you even knowing yes. that anything was wrong, maybe a month prior. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. What place were you in then that's different than where you are now? Then things were going good. You know, when things go smooth and uh, life is good, sometimes, I know with me, I've had the tendency to push God to the side. Life is good. I'm doing good. I don't need you, God. It's, uh, you know, I, I lose concept of His will be done and not mine. But when I was in that place, things were good. You know, I, at that time, I didn't think you know, anything was going to happen. You know, I'm walking around Walmart with two feet and... Um, uh, we even kind of talked about church a little bit. Do you remember that? Oh, that's right. I we drifted... Did this time a year ago, um, I was, uh, thank God, I was exposed to the TE church and family and Tim and Linda. Uh, they've been very vital and critical uh, through this whole period of time, praying with me, sending me texts, and, and Tim especially being right there, praying with me while I was in the hospital. But, um, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You're doing awesome. We, 
I, I think where, what I'm leaning toward is there's a difference even in your spiritual walk now than there was at that point. That's right, yeah. Because I started to drift away from TE even because, like, again, it was back to, you know, things are going good. Perhaps I don't need a place to go worship or, 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 or church or any of that, you know. And so it got, God got pushed to the side. And that's happened a lot throughout my life, you know. And I, I'm curious about this. When you were laying in the hospital bed mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> they told you the prognosis of what was happening and what was going to happen with your leg, what were your thoughts toward God, honestly? Yeah, I was really uh, angry because, you know, I've been a believer, like I said, most of my life, most of it. Again, were those times when things were going good, I would, like, tend to go away from God. But... Um, when I heard those words, it was, it was terrifying. I was mad and angry at God. Like, why me? Why, why are you going to take away my leg? What did I do wrong in my life to deserve this? You know? I prayed to you constantly. Uh, but I haven't mean, done enough. It wasn't enough. I wasn't fully submitted, like Tim likes to say. And um, it, it, was, uh, it was tough. You know, it was, I was scared. And um, I questioned why he'd be doing something like that to me. Because, you know, me? My leg? What are you talking about? You can take away my leg? So, this gives new meaning to the word bling, folks. I love the Band-Aid. <laughs> Do you guys like the Band-Aid on there? I love the Band-Aid. Yeah. That's good. Well, I got on a bike for the first time two weeks ago, and I fell off. And it was the best falling down I've ever felt, or falling off a bike. But I scratched my leg, and I didn't do it. <laughs> our, our series title, and part of what we're talking about tonight, is the comeback. And the word comeback means that you're coming back to something, meaning that you were somewhere else. So, which is all kind of tying into what you said about being away from church, being away from God. What made you come back, even to, I, I know toward God, but even toward coming back to church and community and that type of thing. Describe that a little bit to us. Well, I know this is where Mark needs to be, where I need to be, um, but it, it's been a lifelong journey, my relationship with God. Uh, Twenty some odd years ago, you know. Actually, let me go back. I mean, I was a prayerful child. I, I believed in God, but I wasn't really sure about Him. I really didn't know really a lot about God, but I knew He existed. He was, you know, something that I needed to probably get connected to. Life goes on, and then I get, I get a little bit older, and um, things start. Well, it's my will started to be done, not God's. I, I wanted to do things my way. And I went, you know, I was on a pretty long tear for 20 some odd years, living the way I wanted to live. I was in the bondage of self, you know, um, and self-centeredness is, is a terrible thing to, to possess. And it's all about how, you know, like I was telling in the video, like, you know, what, how far I can go. And, and, um, and then I was addicted to drugs for many years, and it was how high I can go. I didn't want to feel. Um, but then that's where I knew God was real, though. Um, there's a, the, the Matthew 7, 13, 7, 14 talks about the, the straight and narrow, walking through the straight and narrow gate versus the, the wide open gate. Well, I chose the wide open gate, and that was filled with chaos, self-destruction, pain, suffering, loss. You know, the enemy came in and basically robbed me of my heart and my soul and who I was, you know. And, um, and I knew that wasn't the way God made me. He, all along, he knew my heart. And I always strived to become a better man in his eyes and to be the man that he intended me to be. He didn't intend me to be you know, a drug addict for 20 some odd years and, and, and wrecking havoc amongst my family, you know, people I work for. You know. So through, and, and I hate to even say the word tragedy, um, we look at it as tragedy, but then we also look at it as a way that God has used to bring you closer to Him, um, that has brought you to a place where you um, you feel you just you feel like you're walking in a direction that He wants you to walk. And I know there are probably some people out here tonight uh, that are struggling with some things in their lives and maybe walking down a path that they know they might not want to be walking on. In the last part of this, I'd like you just to take the last minute or two just to share something, if you had anything to share from your experience, from what you've gone through, 
that you could tell them that would give them some kind of hope, some kind of perseverance, some kind of direction, what would, what would that be that you could say? I think the most important thing is to have faith in God. I use faith as an acronym in my everyday life. Forsaken all, I trust Him. And that's easier that's good. Say that one more time. Faith. Forsaken all, I trust Him. I like that. And that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but that's important to have faith and to not quit. See, God instills in us to not give up. God does not want us to die. He wants us to live. Jesus wants us to live, you know? And um, if you have the faith, and prayer is so important. Prayer is real. Prayer works. I mean, my brother had a stroke like 15 or no, 10 years ago, and he, he, he was not even supposed to come, come to. And we laid our hands on him. We prayed. You know, the church had a prayer chain going. And he's now as normal as, you know, as us. You know, so faith, prayer, and just you know, don't quit, don't give up, and know that God, where we go, God is there. So, I mean, he's going to be there if you have that faith and you believe. You know, and keep praying. Like I said, prayer is so important. I prayed without ceasing. So I did, I prayed. Well, I have to say on behalf of everyone here, we are thankful for your faith, for your prayer, for your hope, and for your determination because you've given us an opportunity to see God at hand in someone whose life was um, going through something very difficult. So will you guys help me thank Mark Watson for being here tonight? Thanks. Thank you.